I didn't know if I wanted to make this video because it's like, well, what do I have to say about this? You know, well, well, why do why am I talking about this documentary, Quiet on Set? And I realized, well, I was an actor in Hollywood. You know, I, that was my dream was to be a, a, a famous actor, someone who could reach billions of people one day through television or movies. And there was a point in my life where I, I would have given anything to, to be a famous actor who was successful. You know, there's a, there's a term in Hollywood that I think a lot of people follow, which is selling your soul to the devil. And that, what that means to me is doing things you know isn't part of your soul, isn't part of what you want to do, all for something seemingly worth trading your soul for, which is fame, recognition, validation. This, this docu-series, Quiet on Set, it, it shows how evil Hollywood can be. Specifically, it focused on Nickelodeon. Powerful people like Dan Schneider, who created shows like All That, iCarly, Victorious, The Amanda Show. It was very disturbing to watch what people like him have done with their power. When I was in Hollywood, people were very aware of this power dynamic that wasn't right, that was evil, that was that was using people. But this docu-series was shining a light on something even darker, which was the, the exploitation of kids. People who were growing into who they would become as adults. They weren't there yet. They were, they were taken advantage by adults. It was just a disgusting look at what really does go down over there in, in Tinseltown. The most disturbing part of this documentary was the detailing of a guy named Brian Peck who played Pickle Boy on All That. You know, a seemingly goofy guy who was really uh, a charismatic, fun guy to be around. Unfortunately, he abused, sexually abused Drake Bell, who came forward in this documentary to, for the first time ever, talk about his experience with this. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that there's this part in the documentary where an actor remembers being at Brian Peck's house for a party and going to a room where a painting of a clown drawn by John Wayne Gacy was proudly on display. You know, John Wayne Gacy, the serial killer who murdered at least 33 young men and boys? Yeah, Brian Peck had a correspondence with Gacy while he was in prison. Apparently he was extremely proud of the painting and that he was writing letters to the serial killer. What a freak. Brian Peck was convicted and sentenced to 16 months in jail. In court, Drake was on one side with his mom and his sister, and on the other side, Brian Peck had all sorts of Hollywood people supporting him, rooting him on. Famous actors and producers and directors would write to the judge in defense of Brian Peck, even though they knew Brian Peck was guilty of what, what Drake Bell was accusing him of. He was convicted, rightfully so, and he went to jail for this. And yet, Hollywood, felt the need to defend him, not Drake Bell. And I just think that that's an, an evil that continues to this day. If you want to ruin your childhood, watch Quiet on the Set. And I really mean that. Ruin your childhood because you should know about these things. Be careful who your idols are because sometimes you won't like what you see. I was shocked to find that the actor James Marsden, Will Friedel, and Ryder Strong, those two were from Boy Meets World, they wrote in defense of Brian Peck, like saying, I believe he was coerced into this. He's a really great guy. I think you should lessen the harshness of his sentence. People were writing in to really go to bat for this evil, despicable piece of shit. Brian Peck Right after he got out of jail, Drake Bell recounted this, that he went into a restaurant, saw Brian Peck with a bunch of kids, all boys, minors, and he was hanging around them in a restaurant. It's like, dude, are you freaking serious? I mean, how stupid do you have to be? He was also lovingly taken in by Disney directly after his sentencing was over. He was hired directly onto the show, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, I believe that's what it's called. Wow. Fired from Nickelodeon for this heinous act and hired by Disney. I mean, what else do you need to know? I just think it's funny. Not funny at all, but you know what I mean. Sad. This is what Hollywood thinks needs to be protected. People like Brian Peck. The kids who are now adults in that docu-series, Quiet on Set, I think it's pretty courageous of them to come forward and, and speak their truth. It's important. You'll see this pattern with people in power. They will use our young ones because their brains aren't molded yet. You can manipulate them, which is one of the biggest evils I've ever seen. When I was growing up, I really looked up to, to Hollywood and thought, man, I, I, I want nothing more than to create things over there. And I'm older now. 
I've had my time over there. I, I haven't regretted moving away from Hollywood. Not one day, not one day. When I was in Hollywood, I remember one of my managers, he was such a dick. <laughs> He was a very rude guy. Out of the blue, one day, he started texting me that he had this opportunity for me. It was a Power Rangers role. I, I got pretty close to getting the role. It didn't ultimately happen. But this guy, after baiting me with this opportunity, he started sh sending me these lewd texts, very sexual in nature, things that were so inappropriate and out of left field. I was like, what, what, what is this? And it was such a turnoff and it's just so disgusting. He, he started texting me these graphic scenarios that he wanted to be in with me. And I just, I discontinued that relationship instantly. That wasn't the only instance I had uh, of someone in power using their influence to get something from me. Um, there was this other manager who was, who invited me to his house, was telling me, you know, you really need, you need someone who's gonna go to bat for you. And somehow the conversation got into me doing a nude photo shoot as an Asian, saying, you know, Asians really need to be empowered as men. Uh, let's do a photo shoot. And I remember thinking, me being nude is gonna help Asian male actors? Who's gonna be taking pictures, you? <laughs> And yeah, he was gonna be. Obviously that went nowhere. I never saw the guy in person again. He kept emailing me and trying to pursue me as a client. And um, it was just so disgusting. Back in Chicago, when I, that was where I first started my acting journey. I had a teacher, a female teacher, who I, I was getting lessons at her house. You know, maybe don't go to your teacher's house. But anyway, uh, I did a lesson with her and then she invited me to a play that very night. So I went and then we went back to her house and she was talking with me and we hung out for a while. And then, then I started to leave, it was late. And uh, I was like, well, I gotta go home. Right at the doorway, she said, come closer, come here. And she kissed me. And uh, I remember thinking, wow, that, that, that's moving fast. I went home and never saw her again. I have personal stories that I don't, don't wanna share here. I just, that it got to the point where it's like, wow, is everyone over there like this? And why? Why can't we just make art? My wife and I, I met her and my life started changing for the better. Uh, I'm so thankful I met her. We left Hollywood in 2019 and we, we haven't looked back. Uh, I think some people have looked at my life, my career so far as a failure. Oh, you just did kicking it. You did that show kicking it and then you stopped. I haven't stopped. I, I, I'm gonna be creating as long as I live. I just stopped giving into that ecosystem over there in Hollywood. And I think that as time goes on, people are gonna look back at the Hollywood that is now fading and dying off. I think they're gonna look back at like, ugh, you went to Hollywood, why? <laughs> and I think that's a good thing. Go watch Quiet on the Set. It's good for you to see. You need to know the truth about that place. You need to know what goes on there. Because I think we give too much power to to a place that really doesn't deserve it. And take the power into your own hands. Don't worry about gatekeepers who dangle power and influence over you. You don't need them. You can make whatever you wanna make without them in this day and age. Don't ever sell your soul to the devil. Value yourself and keep making art. I hope all of you are doing well. I care about you and uh, I love you. <laughs> See ya.